Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you. Cassava Science officially released its 10Q that we've been waiting for. They've been, they've been getting sued by so many parties, it's been impossible to keep track of. Well, they gave us an update on there's eight lawsuits, got consolidated to three, and we got dates, including one coming up here in August, uh, to get these resolved. Could be the key to getting all of this stuff cleared away. In addition to that, two, uh, two investment houses uh, slapped by or reiterated their buys on Cassava Sciences off of that latest 50 people open label study data in Alzheimer's checking the audio in Alzheimer's checking the audio in Alzheimer's checking the audio <laughs> uh, so uh, the one has a $58 price target one has a triple digit $100 price target pretty good Biogen officially wrote off more than $200 million worth of its Aduhelm they, they're giving up on the amyloid beta uh, hypothesis. Finally, we saw that they were willing to go after it in the press, and now they're just giving up entirely. Now that we know for sure that it won't make any money. And what else we got? I guess that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Let's get into it. Not investment advisor, not investment. Oh, AMC. AMC did a sort of, they did a, they did a, uh, they're issuing a uh, preferred, uh, a preferred issue, but it's on the it's on the New York Stock Exchange. They're going to issue it, and then they're also issuing a, a non fungible token, but uh, it's unrelated to the stock. So they're just doing that separately, and their stock is down. So if you're wondering, well, they're down. How come that didn't help them with their short squeeze? Well, they didn't they didn't do what we wanted them to do. They issued something on the New York Stock Exchange, and then separately for not for stockholders, but just for anybody who wants to sign up for their club. They're doing an NFT. That's cool, but that's just a separate thing. Alrighty. Not investment advisor, not investment advice, number one rec stock analyst in the world. This is the best research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because the financial media doesn't care about us, do they? No, they don't. They don't care. There's special interest and hedge fund controlled, misinforming and disinforming us, but that's okay. We've got each other. We've got Investors Club. This opening spiel is getting better, isn't it? Should be getting better after, what, 6,000 times. <laughs> Let's get right into it. So, first we've got uh, B. Riley reiterated its buy. Now, they lowered their price target from 72 to 58. But last time they talked about the stock, it was like, it was a, it was a double from where it is here, or better. So, the, the, whole, the whole market has sold off since then. They reiterated a buy. They've got a $58 price target. And Sumit Roy over at Jones Trading reiterated his buy with a $100 price target. Good job, team. Alrighty, and then uh, Adu Helm, after failed Alzheimer's launch, Biogen writes off the remaining value of its Adu Helm inventory. We don't have to get into it, but they wrote off $233 million worth of Adu Helm, the remainder of its inventory. It's dead. It never should have gotten to market. They never should have pursued it for so long. We knew that. We knew that. And then here's the 10Q. There wasn't a ton in there. Somebody in the Discord uh, pointed out. I, I looked at this. When I looked through, I saw these updates on the legal proceedings. They didn't seem like much to me, but somebody pointed out, no, no, they've got uh, dates set. And then also these, these things were consolidated. And then also they gave some color on the fact that there it looks like there's four lawsuits against Cassaba, and then four more lawsuits on behalf of Cassava, not seeking damages from Cassava, against executives seeking damage on behalf of Cassava against executives. Uh, actually, I don't, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's seeking damage on. Uh, they're not. They're, the plaintiff is not seeking uh, in those four. The plaintiff is not seeking damages for themselves. So, so, but anyway, they, they have to defend the executives in those cases, though. So let's, let's check that out. Let's get the details on that and see the upcoming dates. So between August 27th and October 26th, 2021, four putative class action lawsuits were filed alleging violations of federal securities laws by the company and certain named officials 
The complaints rely on allegations contained in citizens' petitions. So the, the point of, uh, I highlighted that part, the citizens' petitions. This is this is all none of there's no new allegations in any of this, and, and there never there hasn't been new allegations for a long time. They're they're noting that this is all based on the stuff in the citizens' petition, which is almost a year old. Coming up, we should have a uh, <laughs> we should have a one year anniversary party for the citizens' petition being filed. <laughs> Okay, and then on June 30th, 2022, a federal judge consolidated, so this just happened uh, five weeks ago, a federal judge consolidated the four class action lawsuits into one and appointed a lead plaintiff and a lead counsel. So, and then we're going to see that these other uh, lawsuits are going to depend on this lawsuit. It was the four combined to one. So they're really all seven, at least, there, there's seven federal ones. It seems like all the federal ones are all now going to, are going to be decided by this by this case. Lead plaintiff and so maybe City University of New York and all the journals and everything else will then have this be finally exonerate a cassava from all the crap. Lead plaintiff is expected to file a consolidated amended complaint by August eighteenth, twenty twenty two, and briefing on defendant's motion to dismiss is scheduled to be completed January 16th, 2023. So January 16th, 2023, put that on your calendar. That is the date, uh, the defense of Cassava motion to dismiss, and we'll see if they get that dis motion to dismiss on January 16th. The company believes the claims are without merit and intends to defend against these lawsuits vigorously. So there we go. On November 4th, 2021, a related shareholder derivative action. So now this, the, there's four lawsuits that are not against Cassava, but are on behalf of Cassava against the executives. On November 4th, the related shareholder derivative action was filed purportedly on behalf of the company in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Texas, asserting claims under the U.S. securities laws and state fiduciary duties laws against certain named officers and members of the company's board of directors. Uh, this company, this complaint relies on allegations made in the citizen's petition. So again, nothing new. This is all stuff from the citizen's petition. Complaint alleges, among other things, that the individual defendants exposed the company to unspecified damages and securities laws, securities law liability by causing it to make materially false and misleading statements. The derivative case seeks, among other things, to recover unspecified compensatory damages on behalf of the company. The plaintiff, so they're not suing the company. The, the, plaintiff, the plaintiff in this derivative case does not seek relief against the company. The company has, however, the, uh, the company has certain indemnification obligations to individual defendants. So you knew that was, and, and which is fine. So they're, they're going to, Somebody still. This is this is still something the shorts would do. They could go after Remy, and I forget the member of the of the board that they added somewhat recently. Somewhat recently, uh, that was gone after in the citizens' petition. Uh, and so, if they can make them look bad on behalf of the company, it's again uh, fake good guy stuff. We've seen this ploy of fake good guy stuff. So and so anyway, they're going to use their their legal team and their resources to defend the executives and board members as they should. Uh, certain indemnification obligations to the individual defendants. That's what they're saying, is they're going to defend the executives and board members. Since November 4th, 2021, three additional shareholder derivative actions were filed alleg alleging substantially similar claims, two in the U.S. District Court for Western District of Texas and one in Texas State Court. All four actions have been stayed pending the resolution of the motions to dismiss in the securities class actions. So the four class actions that were consolidated to one that have that just got a plaintiff and have a another uh, proceeding on August 18th, that the, these, uh, the, all, all of them have been stayed until that and the three federal ones, there's three federal ones against the individuals and one state one against the individuals. Those have all been uh, stayed and the three federal ones have also been consolidated. So there's four class actions consolidated to one against the company, three class actions consolidated to one against the executives, 
or excuse me, uh, four class actions against the company consolidated to one, consolidated to one, three, uh, three suits against uh, the executives and corp and board members consolidated to one federal suits and then one state suit against the individuals. Okay. 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 And so there we have it. And so on July 5th, the three federal court actions were consolidated into a single action. I uh, should have had the stock up the whole time. Uh, this is Compass, if you saw the 1850. Compass is on, still on a roll. It just keeps climbing. It's growing like a fungus. Compass, this is psilocybin mushrooms, psilocybin for treatment-resistant depression, anorexia, all sorts of mental health stuff. On a roll. Cassava was up a little bit last I saw. Galactin is up some more. Uh, IKT hanging in there. And Cassava, where did you go? Cassava, ooh, Cassava breaches 17. The market doesn't like it too much. Breaches 17. The market doesn't like it too much. Down to where, well, gave back some. Let's go to the phones. With that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones. 39 people. We'll take it. Not a huge news day. We'll take it. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. Great to see you. Thank you for being here. With that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones. Join the Investors Club newsletter. Joining the Investors Club newsletters in the description is customary. Well, when in Rome, if you're at Investors Club, customary to join the newsletters. Dale Wayne Mershon. Happy Friday, Joe. Dale, happy Friday, my friend. Great to see you. Happy Friday. We made it. It's the weekend. We made it. Michael, owing to language in the 10Q, looks more likely successful phase two and CMS will lead to breakthrough therapy designation or approval. Your thoughts? We the, Be based on the fireside chat, the throw water on the fire side chat, where uh, Mr. Barbier threw water on almost everything. The two things we got were the blockchain possibility and the notion that CMS was in fact designed to grant breakthrough therapy designation if successful. Uh, I didn't see anything in the filing that uh, owing to language in the 10Q looks more likely successful phase two and CMS will lead to breakthrough therapy or approval. What language in there? I didn't see anything new, but maybe I, maybe, maybe you did. What language? Jake, good morning, Joe. Made it to the live show today, Jaker444. We've got a couple. We're blessed with a couple of Jakes. Jake Thompson, all the way from Canada. Great to see you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Made it to the live show. Great to see you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Rasmus Audio is fine. Thank you, my friend. Very important. Thanks. Really appreciate the feedback. Really appreciate the feedback. Make an audio file joke. Uh, good morning, Joe. Wishing you a great day. Wishing you a great, a great day, Rasmus. Thank you, guys. Great to see you guys. Thanks so much for the well wishes. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you. I will miss you this weekend. La Holy, Lily's drug works on reducing plaque. It is similar to Biogen Med. Yeah, it's the amyloid uh, hypothesis. They're removing plaque in a number of different ways, mostly using or else exclusively using monoclonal antibodies, and it's working to remove the plaque, <laughs> but it's not helping with Alzheimer's and it's leaving people with bleeding brains that swell and they sometimes die once in a while. And uh, it's expensive and you gotta go to a clinic to do it and sit there with a needle in your arm for half an hour. No good, no bueno. Meshik, great to see you my friend. So Joe, you have a nice new house in Florida, right? Maybe we could bring the Citizens Petition Anniversary Party to you. August, we don't have to go to Florida in August. Maybe the, uh, the January uh, dismissal would, but might be a better uh, a Florida, a Florida deal. But that could happen. That could happen. That could happen. Well, uh, and, and, you know, and we should also talk about Austin. And we have, you know, seriously been talking about getting together one of these days. We'll have a victory of some sort to celebrate it one of these days. Austin, as I try to pet the dog who likes to stand just out of reach, uh, <laughs> uh, Austin could be the place to, to get together in the wintertime anyway. 
Chuck, my friend, great to see you. Thanks, Joe. Saba is regaining momentum. Let's continue to hodl. Hold on for dear life. That's, that's all you can really do. It is in biotech. Biotech is a lot like crypto. It's, and so that's where the hodl comes from, the hold on for dear life. It, it's, uh, it is going to be volatile no matter what. Uh, the, the, the best you could have in retrospect a team do the most responsible behavior possible and have a very successful drug. And it's just going to be a tumultuous roller coaster no matter what. So hodling, absolutely. Great idea, my friend. Great to see you, Chuck. Yuri, Yuri, hey, Joe, thank you for all the hard work. Uh, thank you, my friend. Uh, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like hard work. I love this stuff. So that's, uh, that's all good stuff. Thank you for being here. Great doing this stuff with you. Michael, 10Q language indicated FDA agreed the clinical efficacy would be demonstrated by a successful P2 and a phase three to trial design and approval, something like that. All right. While we're talking about that also, I'll go back to that in one minute, but while my, while my memory is jogged, we talked about the inclusion criteria for phase three yesterday. And I said that perhaps uh, based on the general language I saw at clinicaltrials.gov, perhaps it didn't seem like they were going to, uh, they were, it did not seem like they were using Savadex and it didn't seem like they had just one way of, uh, of, of diagnosing Alzheimer's because uh, they left it open and had to be diagnosed by, by they had to, di had to diagnose Alzheimer's pathology. But that was all that I saw. And, and so it didn't seem to me they only had one way. If some places use brain scans, that's okay, whatever. And then, in fact, uh, somebody did find the language that they posted. That there, there was a number of... Uh, uh, maybe I'll, I'll grab it in a second. But there, there's, it, they're not using Savidex. And there actually, is, there's not just one way to diagnose. There, there's, as we know, there's different ways to diagnose Alzheimer's. And so there's, there's a, there was a few inclusion criteria, so there was not just one way. Okay, and then in the 10Q language, I missed that, so I'll look, or I, I didn't see anything that was new, but maybe I'm wrong. But so that's awesome, and that was consistent with what Mr. Barbier said when he was trying to say nothing. So thank you, Michael, for that. If you can find the language, please do. Mar if not, maybe I'll find it for, for Monday. Mark Butter, can we assume there will be a look-in on the CMS after the placebo portion I was pessimistic. I was also pessimistic on 100 people uh, at a year. I didn't think we were going to get the, what we just got. So maybe it, that would be April. I guess it's back in play, or maybe it always was in play. Uh, I was pessimistic on that, but maybe overly pessimistic. So I, I don't know about assuming, but it's a possibility. Yeah. Mark, smooth as butter. Jake Thompson, are we concerned about Anavex competition in the race for approval? Uh, I, I don't think so. And the, the United States market is uh, is so huge for one thing, and Anavex is not running any tr any uh, trial sites here. They're acting on the Sigma one receptor, just like Denepazil. So we should expect some efficacy, but I don't I don't know about uh, it just getting gaining approval as a first line therapy in the US, they haven't even met with the FDA. So I don't know. Uh, with our hearts in the right place, we shouldn't be too concerned about it. Although I just, I don't, I mean, I, I frankly think it might be a decent therapy. They, they, and I don't mean to put it down. I think it might be a good therapy. But I really, the fact that it's working on the same receptor site as Denepazil, I'm just not all that optimistic. And so it would be a shame if it if it if it if it wasn't very helpful, but was able to block cassava from being a first line or something like that. But I just don't see that. I, I just don't see that as a risk. I, I don't see it performing meaningfully different than than uh, than Epizil. And people push back on that and they say, "Look deeper, look deeper." But that's not good enough. Give me a better argument than uh, than figure it out for myself. I just don't. They, it's working on the same receptor. And we know Denepazil works. Okay, great. Uh, but does it work better than Denepazil? I don't know. Is it, is it disease modifying? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we should probably, uh, and then we should also keep in mind that as Cassava has said, as many have said, as somebody said yesterday or the day before here on the club, uh, it, it, a cocktail it looks like it's, it's gonna be, to say that there's gonna be one magic bullet, eh, maybe not. 
Uh, maybe there's stuff uh, managing the blood brain barrier like we talked a little bit about yesterday. Maybe there's the misfolded proteins. Maybe Anavex doing what the Nepazil does, but doing it better. Uh, maybe uh, a, a novice uh, helping to regrow brain cells and perhaps some of these things are directly disease modifying and perhaps some of them are not. Maybe only cassavas is directly disease modifying, but you can also do things with the blood brain barrier and do things uh, to regrow brain cells and to do things that are better than denepazil as well. And then that cocktail gives people a good life. Maybe along with a sleep aid. Maybe that's the five. Who knows? So anyway, uh, we, if our hearts are in the right place, we shouldn't be concerned too much about there's, there's There's too few treatments now, not too many. The one thing we should be concerned about is cronyism at the FDA, corruption at the FDA, that sort of thing, which I don't think is going to help Anavex at all. It helps the big players. Silver Charm, I would bet Biogen's drug was only approved for the stock move uh, 200 hours overnight. The scientists voted zero yes, nine no, and one no vote, but it was approved. SEC needs to investigate that. Yeah, SEC is, is the, the foxes uh, guarding the hen house, so they're not going to do anything. And uh, it doesn't, it, it's, I mean, the FDA and the CDC and the NIH are having so many people uh, resign and whistleblow, but nobody, who, who do you whistleblow to? <laughs> and who do you whistleblow to? Investors Club, we care here at Investors Club. What other institution cares? Rainer, hi, Joe. Have a great weekend. You have a great weekend too, my friend. Times are hard, but at the end, we will win, especially after data of yesterday. Uh, tough times make tough people. Or tough times make great people or something like that. Uh, so you got that right. Uh, I hope you have a great weekend, my friend. Mashik, yes, you're right. Austin, Texas sounds better. Mr. Barry, Mr. Barry, thank you, is the board member that they, they like to go after. Austin, I want to see the new facility. I think it's not too long until their new facility is opened. Uh, maybe we, maybe on the next, with, on, on some kind of a solid big victory, maybe we can rally in Austin. That'll be fun. I used to live in Austin, like we were talking about. Pale, check out the YouTube video, Virtual Investor Conferences, Arizona Metals, posted on July 27th. Pale's still pumping his stock. Looks like a good one. May shook. Yes, you're right. Austin, Texas sounds even better. Maybe even Mr. Barbier would join us. That, there is just no way we wouldn't uh, be uh, trying to get everyone on the team there with us. We would plan something with the whole team. Maybe they could all make it. Maybe some of them could. But yeah, we would definitely, uh, definitely try to meet the team. Yeah, we'll, we'll, don't want don't to assume too much or impose ourselves, but to say they're invited is to not go far enough. Uh, I think Michael's re referencing the special protocol assessment s section uh, of the 10Q, uh, is what Jake is, is saying, uh, I, I, which is, I'm sure is right. I'm not sure it's new, but it's good news though. Silver Charm, I read an article dated 2010 where the SEC was going to start cracking down on these frivolous class action lawsuits 12 years later as blatant as ever. I mean, they, they, yeah, they, they do a lot of, they talk a lot, but they participate in this stuff. The lawsuit, we know that the shorts game plan and the SEC causing more smoke around nothing, but acting like there's, but creating FUD is a part of it and a bunch of meaningless class action lawsuits, creating smoke, creating FUD, is a part of it. We know this. Thank you, good, good comment, Silver. Rainer, NIH is still fun, uh, funding SABA, and guess they have all the relevant data. Yep, they are. Uh, Dr. Wang is still teaching, uh, SABA's Wang is still teaching next semester. Good signs, good signs. Yeah, the, I, he's teaching next semester and maybe more than anyone, teaching more than anyone else in the department or something. Pale, I think there is going to be a major copper shortage later in this decade. I don't necessarily disagree. That, or, or that maybe might just be the, the uh, conventional wisdom at this point. Uh, Arizona looks like it will have amazing copper deposits along with gold, silver, and zinc. Now you've said that. Rasmus, meet up in Austin would be fun. A very long way from Denmark, but if we get share price to where we hope, I would definitely take the trip. Yeah, if, if we would have to be not just 
uh, thing, you know, the, the market rose for a while because by the time we got there, it can go back down. But on a really big, meaningful milestone, then we can, we should, we should do it. Hi, Joe. Hope that you have a great weekend and that the YouTube ad stuff works out so we can enjoy your, uh, new, your new interviews. This weekend, I'm going to incorporate in a different state between that state sending me my stuff, Florida sending me my stuff, and AdSense just sending me my stuff. I should have received two things more than a month ago in one case, more than two months ago in another case. I don't know what the heck. Uh, but no matter. I will just literally incorporate in a different state so I can receive some documents. <laughs> And I went and got my driver's license to do this in the first place. They won't take that. Okay, send me the thing. Won't, won't come. I'll incorporate in Florida. Won't come. Okay, I'll incorporate in another state. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'll, and then well, it's, it's, it's been frustrating to put this amount of content out without it being pushed out by YouTube. So thank you for that. Uh, hi, Joe. Do you think the judge will, will throughout the case against, throw out the case against Cassava due to no issues? Uh, yes, I, I, I believe that there was no uh, part where Cassava intentionally ever did anything wrong. The worst they could ever get him on is like remember when that they had that they're filing for the to raise the money they forgot to include the fee schedule. There was no malicious, fraudulent anything uh, attempt there. So the worst they could they could ever that, that's this goes along with they're having to deal with all these legal issues them having to go back and no, we never did anything wrong, right? The worst they could find is, oops, we forgot to include a fee schedule on a filing. That's, this, that's, so there was no malicious, fraudulent, nefarious, I don't think they did anything wrong ever other than they could have carelessly forgotten to put a fee schedule on a filing here and there type of stuff. So no, I don't think that they're going to, uh, I believe them that they didn't, that they that they didn't do anything wrong not maliciously, fraudulently, nefariously. They might have forgotten a fee schedule on a filing as like the, the tight, you know, here and there. But uh, I don't think they did anything wrong. So no, I don't, I don't, I do think it'll be thrown out. Is, is, yes, I do. I do think it'll be thrown out. JC, hey JC, J, hi Joe, Saba received buy rating from HC Wainwright yesterday. That was the, uh, the first one we saw, $58 price targets. Michael, 10Q, FDA has agreed that the completed phase two, together with ongoing and well-defined phase three, are sufficient to show evidence of clinical efficacy in Alzheimer's disease. I think Jake is correct that that is what the special protocol assessment means, that uh, they, they reviewed with the company. Now, if you are successful in this trial, is it going to lead to approval? Uh, yes. And so that's what they're saying. They, the FDA went through, did special protocol assessment and assessed our protocol and said, yes, this will lead to approval if successful. So I, I, that's good news, but I don't think it's news news. Pale, thanks for the video today, Joe. Thank you, my friend. And you're right. Co copper is an interesting one. Uh, long term, there's just going to be, there's, there's so much of the world is not even on the internet. Not, there's no form of the, the technology that we take for granted. Copper is like years ago. They, there was the Simpsons made a joke about uh, when some startup failed. The guy like punched a hole in the wall and grabbed the copper wire and pulled it out and ran away with the copper wire because <laughs> copper is kind of valuable. And 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 uh, there's copper wire everywhere. Pretty soon, with all the crime, it seems like people are going to be ripping out the copper wire of places. And so, it, it copper is an interesting one. Yeah. As the whole world becomes technologically online and everything, we're going to need some copper. Hi, Joe. Did you try peanut butter for hiccups? If you watched my article, my video on DBVT, my friend, you will know that I cannot try peanut butter for hiccups. I saw that you put that comment in there. Thank you for the thought. I have a, an allergy. Uh, it works like a wonder, just like somifilam. Fast track for compassionate use. Thoughts, ETA. Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that they're going to, I wish that Kassab was going to get compassionate use. The best we can hope for, I think, is after successful cognition maintenance study, they might say, okay, it's time to look in to uh, the, after six months of the, because by that time, all six months, might, everyone in the first trial might be done all six months of uh, the first trial the one year long 750 people you only uh, denepazil was only approved on 6 months you don't need more than 6 months 
and it's safe. So with good CMS, I think they would look in there and say, put the rest of these people on compassionate use and let's approve this thing. That's, that might be the best we can hope for. I don't know. Or finish that first trial, 750 people for a year. But that second trial of a year and a half, we don't need to finish it. Get, get this thing to market. Who knows? But Breakthrough is designed exactly for this. It's a deadly disease without good therapies. It belongs on the market. Jay, hi, Joe. I think Saba has to release the rest of the open label data for the market to, to accept it. Do you agree? I, I, I'm thinking the placebo stuff. The, this cognition maintenance study is going to be huge. That's placebo controlled. That'll be huge. Of course, the phase threes, partnerships, uh, blockchain that would uh, just set the short, the, the share count in order. So uh, I, oh, I want to see more open label data, Jay. What the market will do with it? Don't know. Hey, Joe. Hello, Kevin. Have you ever seriously thought about organizing a Sava Investors Conference in either Florida or Texas? About two, what, about four minutes ago, I did. As we were talking about going to, uh, after a milestone, go to Austin for a, a party, a, a Cassava Scientist party. It, uh, as I was talking, I was thinking, you know what? We could turn that into an Austin, Texas annual biotech something or other uh, conference just as we were speaking. So maybe that's what uh, went through your mind as well when we were talking about everybody meeting up in Austin. We could meet up there annually to do biotech stuff, you know. I just thought about it as you probably just thought about it. Great thinking, great minds. Pale, which three stocks are you most bullish on right now with a five-year time horizon? Saba, Netlist, and Arizona Metals are mine. Great question. I'll say Sava for one. But I love all of my children equally. Um, you know, I have the Investors Club newsletter, which we started in either November or December. And it's been two small caps a month that I've recommended. And I stand by all those stocks. Compass, I recommended it was like 11. And the whole market kept, biotechs kept selling off, went down to like six. But now we just saw it's up to 18. Uh, Galactin got behind like 120 and it doubled right away. There's... Uh, just on Galectin's cancer uh, therapy, it's still undervalued. But all of these are where food comes from. Uh, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, like it took me till July 31st to finally recommend two stocks for July. And it's not because I didn't want, I, I had, I put a lot of research into a bunch of stocks and I could have, again, I could have written about them, but my heart wasn't in them. And I finally got to that my heart is in. And I haven't recommended anything that my heart is not in. So I can't, I'll say Saba as one of them, but the other two, there's just so many. There are not just so many, but I, I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't think they were great. Elders in Australia, I don't know any stock like that. And, and there's uh, Art Vivens, I don't know any stock like that. It, 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 so I, I don't know. I like them. I, I, I don't know. That's a great question. I love the question, but I'm, I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I love all my children equally. I think the commodity that is most interesting over the next five years is uranium. I don't know enough about that. The, uh, the new nuclear things that are going, if nuclear takes so long to commission and come online, from what I understand, uh, I guess they're recommissioning old sites, but from what I understand, uh, the new stuff that's going to come online will take a long time, but then it won't be somehow the, the same. The uranium market, it won't be demand for the uranium market as it is now. That type of uranium or something. I don't, know, I don't know enough about it, but from what I understand, it's not going to... New uh, nuclear energy use may not actually put a demand on the current, on the traditional uranium. I'm not sure. Silver, a lot of catalysts ahead for Tesla. I'm long. I, I love Musk. I really do. Have a good weekend, Joe. Silver, have a great weekend, my friend. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Tim, would you prefer a buyout or a partnership well, I got a show to do, so a partnership, and they'll, they'll keep cranking out press releases. <laughs> so selfishly, I want a partnership. It also leaves more upside, although a buyout is just a quick payday, so that would be good too. I, a buy, the only thing wrong with a buyout is that the share count is fake. The share price is artificially depressed, and it's just really hard to get full value. A partnership where you're starting to get cash flows from the market then, then that, that can solve the share count issue because you're getting real cash. Eventually, you can pay cash dividends. 
So a full value buyout or a partnership. Pale, I hope Sava's stock price stays low until FDA approval so we can all buy more at low prices and then shoots up with a great degree of approval before a buyout. Yeah, it's, if it's, we, the science it looks good and the market's huge. It just looks really good. All of this in the end can be a good thing. You know, if you, you can dollar cost average in. Tim is down for Austin. Power, I am too. That'd be great. Power moves. Thoughts on KTRA. They focus on tumors and breast cancer. I don't know, uh, don't know KTRA. I'll take a look at it. When do you think IKT will have a turnaround? Well, it seems who knows what will happen with their Parkinson's program. That is a that's a moonshot. Uh, but I, I really like Dr. Milton Warner. Who knows the Parkinson's that 009 drug? It, 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 they're developing other drugs in that class. 009 in the end may fail. But I really like Dr. Werner, and they also have 001 Pro. And that one is just a completely different idea. And there's, uh, it's just, it, it, I don't want to call it a slam dunk. Nothing is ever a slam dunk, but it's not a long shot. The Parkinson's moon shot is a long shot, just by definition. Uh, it worked in animals. That's the best they got. And who knows? And then the science seems to make sense, but there's other cases where it works in animals and the science seems to make sense. But it's a long shot uh, and a moon shot if it works. But 001 Pro is not. And I like Dr. Milton Werner. I, he's a, I think he's a winner and a fighter and smart. And he's, I think he's going to make that program successful. It, just, it looks like it's already headed for success. And they can get, they can, they could possibly just get to be a modest cash flow positive company uh, without their moon shot. They could just be an interesting little company. I don't know. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 my, I, I think, I think 001 Pro will be successful. I think that uh, 009 is a long shot, uh, but a moon shot. But it, it, I think perhaps we should turn the focus more or just put the focus more on 001 Pro. I don't know. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what the market is doing. I don't know. Discounting the Parkinson's, the 009. John, correlation coefficient for the two sets of 50 data. Anybody done that? The better the fit between the two sets of data would bolster confidence that these results are not random. I didn't, I didn't see correlation coefficient, but we saw 34 people improved out of 50 the first time, 29 improved the second time, not bad. And then what was it? Uh, the second time it was 21 people uh, got worse, but not as worse. And the first time it was 20. So pretty similar there. And then the final number, what was it? 16 people, uh, got worse this time. And it was 10. The first time it was some, yeah, 16 and 10. So th those 20, 29 versus 34, 10 versus 11 and 16 versus 10. Those are, those are, they look pretty similar. They're not that they're not wildly different. Hail, a partnership or buyout that leads to dividend payments would be ideal. Yes, it would be. And, and that's, that's a possibility. Milestone payments, upfront payments. Uh, they're developing other stuff. It's, they're, they're a founder-led, cool little company that's got, they bought a new building. They've got plans. So we'll see. Tim, buyout at 1,000 to 10,000, and most of us don't ever need to work again. Darn right. DeSantis is a legend. Didn't want to get political. I'll just leave it out there without any uh, leave it out there without any commentary on my part. Uh, great to see you guys. That's the commentary I'll say. Great to see every one of you. So happy you're here. Thank you for being here. I uh, can't wait for Monday to see you again. Great week for the data. Great week for the good guys. Great week for Alzheimer's disease patients. Cool week in investing. Had those two new stocks I recommended. Both shot up quite a bit. Both shot up quite a bit. And the other ones, Compass, Collect, and they're going up quite a bit. Uh, Oh, we're getting some more. We're getting some more. Kevin, I don't think a correlation makes any st sense statistically. Rasmus, 009 is part animal models only. You are right that it's extremely early in human trials, 
but first one is done and it looks safe so far. Yes, it looks safe, that's true. And it's not just the animals, the science looks good as well. On paper, it looks good. Uh, seven day dose, so not much, but more than animal studies. More than animal studies, and, and on paper it looks good, but you're right, it's been in people. But it's been in people, and they haven't said a whole lot more than it's safe, which is fine. You're not gonna get, after seven days, you know, you're not gonna get a whole lot more than that. But yeah, excellent comment. Yeah, it, it's, I, I should, I, I, that's, I am remiss, you are right, because like we talked about with cassava's data, the number one thing about that data that we don't talk about enough is that it was safe and well tolerated. The drug was safe and well tolerated. So yeah, animal models, it looks good. On paper, it looks good. And then in people, it's safe. That's hugely important. Thank you, Rasmus. Great, great, great point. Jay, Sava used mean on the first 50 and then average on the 100, they used average. Why did they change? Mean on the first 50 and then average on the... Uh, I thought they were using mean the whole time. I didn't notice them use something besides mean. They used the mean average. I, I, if they just said average, I think it was still the mean average as far as I know. The mean is the, yeah, I think they just may have, and Kevin agrees, I think, I think Jay, they just may have left out the word mean and, and with implied mean, I think. And Kevin's, yeah, same thing. So yeah, they think they probably just left it out. They're, they're busy being sued. <laughs> so great to see you guys. Uh, mean is the middle, yeah. You're, you might be thinking of uh, median. Yeah, me, median is the, if you had to pick one of the numbers that's the middle, you got the median. Mean is mean will have like a decimal because it's the, it's the average we all think of. Uh, they, they add them all up and chop it. Median is you select one, and then there's the mode, which is the most common one. But yeah, mean, when, when, they, when they say average, we all think of mean average. It's the add them up and divide it up. Median is the middle one. Both mean is the sense statistical. Will the government agencies say that their organization investigation is over? And now we actually, the SEC never will. They don't do that. They create FUD and never give the all clear. The Department of Justice creates FUD and never gives the all clear. Uh, no, they won't. They if, if there ever was a, a, a case, the Department, the Department of Justice never said there was a case against cassava, and there may not be. They may be investigating the shorts, uh, but if they if they never said they never justice never said there was, and then the, the, if they'll they'll never give the all clear either. So now we'll never hear an all clear. Uh, more people saying the mean is the average. Couldn't agree more, but I got to agree more that it's great to see you guys and you guys are not average. I'll tell you that. You guys are way above average. Great to see you. We'll I'll see you again Monday and no issues re regarding cassava. Or go after shorts. Yeah, they should go after the shorts. Great to see you guys. Have a great weekend. See you Monday. See you in the Discord. Join the newsletters and see you in the Discord.